Welcome to the channel everyone. Today we are going to talk about building your prepper pantry. We're going to talk about where we are in the process, how much you should have, where you should start, and the two different types of pantries. Let's get going. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. So friends, building a preparedness pantry is something that I think is becoming more and more important in today's environment, especially with rocketing food prices and supply chain issues. And if you don't have a place where you can grow a lot of your own food, you're gonna need to put some food away for you and your family. Now, even though we do grow a lot of our own food, we still do put other stores away that we don't grow yet here on our homestead. And that's things like rice, flour, sugar, etc. Now we use several different methods to store food and we're gonna talk about those a little bit later in the video. But right now, let's talk about how much you need. And when talking about how much you need, you need to think about calories. How much do you need per day? Well, adult males need about 2,500 calories and adult females about 2,000. However, when you're working on a homestead, you are physically burning way more calories than you would if you had an office job in the city. So you personally are going to need to factor in those things per your own lifestyle. But let's go off that base of 2,500 and 2,000. So we are a family of four. I have two daughters, my wife, and myself. And roughly calculated for just one year of food storage, we need about 3.1 million calories stored. Now you're thinking to yourself, that's a lot but I don't want you to get discouraged. I want you to start where you're at and build up. You can build up slowly, you can build up quickly. Just start the process, you'll be all right. So what does 3.1 million calories look like? Well, essentially, this bag of pinto beans behind me, this 50 pound bag, is about 80,000 calories by itself. And this bag of rice, this 50 pound bag of rice, is about 30,000 calories. So you can do the calculation that if you just ate beans and rice, you would have to store a ton of bags like these. So of course you're gonna add other things into your diet. Let's take for example, this little one pound bottle of honey. This has about 1400 calories in it. And this 25 ounce bottle of olive oil has about 6,000 calories in it. So if you are going for a one year storage pantry, you will be able to plan out your meals, kind of calculate the amount of calories that are in all of those meals, or if you use plain food, it's much easier, and arrive at what's best for you. And the reason I'm not gonna calculate everything for you is because everybody's diet is different. For us, we're vegetarians, so we've taken the meat out of that and replaced it with a lot more beans and things like that. Now is the perfect time to tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. As you all probably know, I am always looking for ways to improve these videos for you, and that includes building my knowledge in video creation, editing, and other areas. If you didn't already know, Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of classes to help you acquire and learn new creative skills. Right now, I'm still taking a class called Cinematography Basics by Zach Mulligan. My goal is to improve how our videos look so that I can better visually communicate our story or project to you. I'm excited to continue learning and discovering new skills that I can utilize to grow our channel and present better information for you. To help you make 2022 a year of new learning and growth, the first thousand people to use the link on my description box or my code country living experience a homesteading journey we'll get a one month free trial of skillshare after that they offer an annual membership for less than 10 bucks a month that's pretty cool head below to click the link in the video description to start exploring today now let's talk a little bit more about where to start basics are being able to pick up something extra at the grocery store when you go on your weekly trips, like some extra pasta or some beans, and then store them in a container like this in your pantry. We also have a bunch of amaranth that we have in this type of container in our working pantry. Now let me explain to you the different types of pantries. What you see behind me is a working pantry. 
This is an extra storage area that we did a build on. If you haven't seen me build these shelves, click on the video at the top of the screen. But we always rotate through our food on this shelf right here. Additionally, that happens in this pantry. Both are in our kitchen. And we continuously rotate through our food and we keep a little bit extra. You can see all the beans, the cans of beans here and coconut milk. We rotate through these all the time. But we also store vegetables that we harvest from the garden, at least those that don't need to be refrigerated, like these sweet potatoes and our garlic. And while we are constantly eating through these, and these do keep for a long time just sitting like this, we are also preserving these at the same time. You can see everything from rice and beans and flour here to canned peppers and pears and lentils, things of that nature. And then also down here, we've got some snacks like this berry trail mix from Sam's Club. We've got chia seed and we've got things that we eat out of that we have just freeze dried. So those live here on the shelf. I haven't packaged those away for long term. We've got freeze dried grapes. These are kind of snacks and things that we can eat all the time and we will rotate through those. So these two pantries are our working pantry. Let's go talk about the other one. So we are now in our long-term storage pantry. This room itself is usually very dark. I've opened things up so you can see me on the camera and it is hyper insulated. In here we have a freezer and we also have mostly freeze-dried food or we are building up our freeze-dried stores. We also have things that are vacuum sealed and those things that you store in here need to be set and ready to be long-term stored. So what I mean by that is that I either need to be freeze-dry food or sealed up properly. So obviously one of those things that is sealed up properly that will store for a very long period of time, a few years anyway, is things that are frozen. You can see we're prepping for freeze drying some of our strawberries from our garden here. Those are on the top. But down below, you can see that we've got some beans, we've got flour, we've got cornmeal, uh, little packages of the flour that I can eat, which is uh, gluten free, I guess you could say, and other things. There's some rice in here, etc., etc. But this stuff we'll keep for a very long time in the freezer and not be bothered by insects, obviously, and it's not gonna be bothered by rodents either. So this room is still under construction, as you can see, but we've got our totes with our freeze-dried food in it. This is actually purchased freeze-dried food, and then we have our own that we have just started to do with our new Harvest Right freeze dryer. If you haven't seen those videos, go click up at the top of the screen. And in the near future, I'm going to be doing another video on this. We'll be doing a whole series of videos, but this thing will actually save you money and we'll break down how much it costs and how much it costs to do the food for the electricity and to purchase the food yourself if you're not growing it yourself. And you will be absolutely amazed. If you're interested in one of these, click on the link below the video. So in the stackable tote, you can see that we've started to accumulate a lot of freeze dried things. Now I didn't put the calories on here and I should have, but I about know how much uh, each one of these contains and how much that will feed us uh, for our family. Now we've got some older stuff that I had here just for preparation. We've got some hot apple cobbler here, it's five ounces, says it serves two and it has uh, two servings at 280 calories. So that is, you know, pretty solid amount of food right there. And then here, even more calories, whoops, even more calories. We've got some scallop potatoes I made. So these totes are nice to keep everything organized and it's important to label and date everything as well. But you can also utilize just a bucket from Lowe's or Home Depot and what's called a gamma lid. So this lid has a seal on it but these particular gamma lids actually turn out so that they're double sealed. So you can actually unscrew the top like that, put your food in, and then it has another seal around this portion right here. We're gonna be filling this up fast, but it's important to know that you need to 
store the food that you've freeze dried in a certain way. And that means if you've got an issue with any rodents, if you just got your Mylar bags hanging out, you know, say on the shelf over there, then those rodents can chew through them. So I'd recommend always a tote or a bucket with a gamma lid. So this kind of goes against what I just said, just because I haven't sealed them yet in any uh, Mylar bags, but the light's blocked out from these oats, so I'm not worried about it. And these are solid uh, opaque containers, so they are not gonna let light through to degrade our syrup. But like I said, this room is usually dark, so I'm not that worried about it. But I do need to get to those and properly seal them up. So for your long-term storage, a good thing to have a good supply of and on hand at all times is a supply of Mylar bags, whatever brand they are, and oxygen absorbers. Now a little trick that I've learned with these oxygen absorbers, they are extremely sensitive. So if there's five or 10 of them in a pack, you wanna have five or 10 bags full of food ready to roll ready to have one of these just dropped in the top and sealed up immediately because these do not last long at all if they're laid out. So there are two fundamental rules that are really important. The first one has three parts. That's replace, date, and rotate. And that is to keep your food stores uh, fresh and uh, so they store for the longest period of time just in case there's some really bad event where you're not gonna have any food coming in at all. And the second is to go at your own pace. So like I said earlier, just start with that extra box of spaghetti from the store, that extra can of beans, and you will be on your way. Like for us, we don't have that 3.1 million calories stored up yet. Our situation's a little bit different as a homesteader because we do grow a lot of our food. So it's constantly coming in where we are not reliant on the store itself. So the things that we store are those things that we don't grow. But we are going to try to grow those in the near future. But unfortunately down here in Texas, I don't have any maple trees to tap for syrup. I think we're gonna try sorghum syrup. In another video we're gonna be doing very soon, we're gonna talk about the health benefits of freeze drying things yourself. Why it's important to do that over buying store-bought freeze-dried food. In a lot of cases, the difference is really big. Now just remember, if you're vacuum sealing things like flour in mason jars, this is a good method, but these lids will only last for a few years until that seal starts breaking down. You need a good high quality lid to be able to last upwards of five years for this process. We use lids from a company called Four Jars, and the link is in the description below if you wanna check them out. They are top quality. Now go check out this video right here, which talks about the six crops that you should grow in your survival garden that have the highest calories, the highest nutrient density, and that are the easiest to grow. Have a great day. We love you. See you next time. Bye.